Okay, so we're in part two of our um, midterm review. Okay, so yesterday we reviewed chapters one through six. Okay, so we did rational numbers, we did expressions, uh, we did equations, inequalities, proportions, ratios, percent problems. All right, so we covered all of that information yesterday. Um, so a lot, pretty heavy yesterday on the review. You guys did really well. Uh, today we're going to focus on probability and statistics. Okay, so probability and statistics. Now, the first one kind of threw me off a little bit as well. So I just want to, I just want to clarify as we're reading this um, question because it threw me off at first um, what my total was going to be. So it says Doug supplies costumes to a number of theater companies. He recently provided 18 different hats, including four fedoras. What is the experimental probability that the next hat requested from Doug's inventory will be a fedora? Okay. So remember with probability, all right, let's, um, let's just kind of refresh on the formula. The probability that an event will happen, okay, that goes in parentheses, equals what value goes on top, which not necessarily for that problem, but just in general, what value goes on top? The, starts with an F, favorable outcomes, okay? So favorable outcomes over total outcomes, favorable over total, okay, total possible. So because it said including for fedoras, okay, the, that value is included in the total of 18, all right? So you just have to be careful. Sometimes it gives you a value, then it gives you another value, and you have to add them together to get your total. You guys might remember some of those examples from your classwork, okay? But here, my total is 18. All right, so let's try to calculate this. The probability that the next hat will be a fedora. Okay, now I want you to go with favorable over total and then calculate the percentage. Okay, so how many fedoras were in the collection? Four out of 18. Okay, so now you need to do the division. Um, on your exam, you'll be given percentages okay, in your multiple choice. So you need to calculate the percentage. What's four divided by 18? Round it out four decimals. Zero, Zero point. point two, two, two. Okay, lots of twos. So the fourth two rounds the third two to a what? Three, two. All right, so the probability of a fedora is approximately 22.2%, okay? Um, so again, you're just calculating favorable out of total. All right, so let's look at the next problem. It says you pick a card at random, find the probability, um, and it gives us the target, targeted probability in parentheses. So I'm not gonna give you any other help. I just wanna kind of see who, who can um, set this problem up and uh, see if you can solve it. Okay, how many cards in the, you know, in the assortment are not a five. How many cards are not a five? There are three cards that are not a five. How many cards total are there? Four. Four, Four cards total. So remember, the total number goes in the denominator and then the favorable outcomes, okay? So how many cards are not a five? Three, and that's 75%. Okay, 0.75 or 75%. All right, you guys see what you did? Yes. Okay. All right, so that might be a helpful one just to go back and watch. All right, so I'm not saying that you have to go back and watch every single second of both review videos, but definitely if something was confusing to you, go back and listen to it again, watch it again, and you know work the problem ahead of time, and that will help you study. All right, so with compound probability, um, I have two challenges here. Okay, the first challenge is to figure out a favorable outcome for two events to happen, okay? The next challenge is to figure out the total number of possible outcomes with a compound event, okay? So we learned something called the fundamental counting principle. We called it FCP. Anybody remember fundamental counting principle? What do we do there? Okay, how many options are in each category? then we multiply those numbers together, okay? All right, so let's look at compound probability. What is the probability 
that I would flip heads, okay, and roll an odd number. Oops, I'm sorry. Heads, comma, odd. That I would flip heads and roll an odd number, okay? So what we need to do first is we need to calculate the total number of possible outcomes, okay? That's done by figuring out how many possibilities are in each category. So how many sides to the coin do I have? Two. I have two. How many sides to the dice do I have? Six. Six. What's two times six? Oh, Twelve. Two. So 12 is my total number of possibilities. Now I need to decide how many outcomes could be odd and heads. Three. Okay. So how many odd numbers do I have on the number cube? Three. Three. I have a one, a three, and a five. Is it possible to flip heads and roll a one? Yes. What about flip heads and roll a three? Yes. And a five? Yes. Now, if I flip heads and roll a four, does it satisfy both of my targeted probabilities? No. So there are only three favorable outcomes. One heads, three heads, and five heads. Those are the only favorable outcomes possible. All right? That reduces to one-fourth, which is what as a percentage? 25%. All right, so in a minute, we're going to jump on IXL and practice a couple of these, okay? But I don't want to bog down the video by just practicing the same thing over and over again. So this is the one for the video. Then we're going to practice a couple more in just a minute, okay? So 25%. Okay, all right. So now we're going to go jump over to statistics, okay? Um, Albert keeps track. A populations. Remember when we did this the other day? It was the group jam, okay? Where we set up proportions and we just have to be comparing the same value on both sides of our ratios, okay? So he's keeping track of populations of various creatures near a lake. In order to estimate the dragonfly population, he captures 540 dragonflies and marks them with a special paint, okay? So I'm gonna put the marked dragonflies in my numerator, okay? He releases them, waits a few days, and then captures 570 dragonflies. He notices that 54 of them are marked, okay? So out of those two values, which value do you think belongs in the numerator on the other side? 54. 54. Because now both of my numerators are values that are marked dragonflies, okay? So again, same thing on both sides of our proportion. Okay, and he caught 570. That was the population of his sample. So now it says to the nearest whole number, what is the best estimate for the dragonfly population? Okay, so that's the variable that I'm solving for. Does everybody see how I set that up? Marked dragonflies over total dragonflies. Now I'm gonna do my cross products. Okay, and I get 54P equals 5, what's 540 oh. times 570 307, yep 307,800 now when I divide both sides by 54 okay all right P amount of the population is about how many 5,700 Okay, all right, so again, just as a reminder, these questions are multiple choice on your exam, but you need to know the process, how to set up the problem, so you're not guessing. You know, to have a one in four chance at getting a question right, it's not gonna turn out favorable, okay? So this is how, I think you would agree that you would have to show some kind of work to get the answer, otherwise you will be guessing, okay? Okay, so box plots, all right? This is something that um, we spent a little bit of time on the other day. You will not be required to make your own box plot, okay? All you will be asked is to read a box plot and tell me certain information from the box plot, okay? So let's just review what each uh, marking on the box plot means. The median of the entire data set is your middle number. So the median is the middle number. Okay, it splits the data 
into an upper quartile and a lower quartile. So Q1 and Q3 are the medians of those data sets. So when the median splits the data, then I have a median for my upper half and a median for my lower half. Does anybody remember what the minimum means? What does minimum mean? The lowest, the lowest number in the data set. So what does maximum mean? The highest. the highest number in the data set, okay? So that's what all the values mean, okay? And I'm gonna ask you just several questions about the box plots, okay? Well, I actually only ask you two on the midterm, but it could be any number of questions, all right? So I've just included three examples here of the types of questions that would be asked on your exam. So here I have a box plot of park visitors. All right, what is the range of those values, okay, in the data set? So look at how the box plot is on the number line. What is the median of this data set? And what is the minimum of this data set? All right, so go ahead and answer those three questions based on the data. Adding the minimum and the max. It's not adding the minimum and the max, it's subtracting. So to find the range, you want to find the difference between the highest and the lowest amount. All right, now the challenge here is there, there's not a number value for the minimum uh, value, okay? But I do see that it's a hash mark between 100 and 150. So what value is halfway between 100 and 150? 125, okay? So 125 is the number in the middle. So now that you have these values, what is 350 minus 125? 225, so that's gonna be your range, 225, okay? The median of the data set, what did you guys get? Okay, 250. And the minimum, 125. Okay, any questions on that? Anything, guys? Okay. Um, I think that wraps it up. Okay. Um, now, one thing I, that uh, we did not talk about today that I know is a question on your exam, singular, okay, is the biased versus unbiased. Okay. Now, that was on your quiz on Friday. All right. But just as a review, and I, I want to make sure this makes it on the recording. If, um, if a sample is biased, what does that mean? It's not valid, right? So if it's biased, it's either because it's not random or because it's too small to represent the population. I can't ask 10 people if they're, um, I don't know, if they are Republican or Democrat, okay, and then say, oh, well, you know, all 10 of them said that they're Democrats, so that means everybody in America is a Democrat, okay? So 10 people doesn't represent 400 million people, that's all right? So that's biased because the sample wasn't big enough to represent a population, all right? So uh, we had, um, I think we talked about a landfill example. Like, you know, if you're wondering how many people in the town are opposed to the new landfill. Y'all know what a landfill is, right? Mm -hmm. Where you put all your trash or, um, or for it, you're not gonna only ask the people who live around the landfill, right? Because if you only ask them, of course they're not gonna like it because they have to smell it every day, all right? So just when you're reading a scenario, ask yourself, can this data represent the population? Is it random and is it big enough for accuracy, okay? All right, so that covers your midterm. You need to be familiar with your review sheet. Where is the answer key posted? Google. Google Classroom. You need to go back. Um, I'm unlocking your quizzes from Friday. You need to go back, see what you missed, correct it, okay? Work through those problems. And then you need to rewatch this review PowerPoint. It's about 45 minutes total, okay? So pop in your AirPods, just kind of listen through it. You can fast forward and rewind all you want. If you're like, man, I really understand like the first half of what she said, but I wanna listen to the second half. It's not an assignment, okay? Use the review video however you need to, but you need to prepare, okay? So this is the last thing I'm gonna say. Your exam is 50 questions, okay? 
the goal is to get a B. You're an honor student, you need to score at least a B, okay? So to score a B, you can only miss 10 questions on your midterm. That means you have to get 40 correct. Now, 40 seems like a lot, all right? But again, you have the resources that you need to study. So just kind of keep that in mind. You basically have 10 like freebies. Now you do have a bonus question as well. So technically you have 11, okay? But our goal is to get a B or higher, okay? So we know those grades are important um, as we approach the end of the semester. So we really wanna finish strong, okay? All right, it's worth one question. So the bonus is worth a question, two points. All right, and that'll be everything for your review.